Dear brothers and sisters, in the analogies that the Prophet ﷺ uses to describe this exercise of fasting that we have right now is a very interesting one. He called a siyam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called it a shield. Fasting is a shield. A sawmu junna. Fasting is a shield. Which is very interesting because taqwa also comes from a similar word. Fasting was prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those who came before you so that you may gain taqwa. Taqwa is a protective barrier. Fasting is a shield. And what beautifies this even further is when you start to read about the ways in which the Prophet ﷺ elaborated on it being a shield. In one authentic narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, As-sawmu junna ma lam yakhriqha. He said, وسلم, fasting is a shield, so do not damage your own shield. Do not crack your own shield. As if to say that no one else would be able to crack through the shield, don't crack your own shield. Don't do anything that would compromise the potency, the strength of that armor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. And what the scholars mention here is, of course, this is the one who cracks their own shield of fasting with their own sins. Where the Prophet ﷺ says, in many similar narrations, that Allah has no need of the fasting of a person who gives up their food and drink but does not give up idle speech and foul speech. What's the point, right? So a person who penetrates their own shield, breaks their own shield in places. And so I want you to imagine you're fasting as a Jannah. That's the first thing. Don't crack your shield, he teaches us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The second way in which it is a Jannah, in which it is a shield, the Prophet ﷺ said, fasting is a shield. So when any one of you is fasting, let them neither indulge in any type of obscene language nor raise their voices, okay? لا يسخب. Don't raise your voices at one another, meaning don't get into arguments, don't get into fights. And the Prophet ﷺ said, so if anyone tries to argue with you, tries to fight with you, then simply respond, I am fasting, I am fasting. Now, by the way, the ulama here say very beautiful things about this. Is this, you know, a way to win an argument? Like sometimes you use, uh, may Allah forgive you, not to actually make dua for someone's forgiveness, you use it to win an argument, right? So there's actually quite a bit of, of writing on whether or not you should verbalize your inni sa'im. You should actually say, I am fasting, I am fasting. And so the scholars actually have a difference of opinion on this. And the most balanced opinion Allah knows best is that when it comes to the obligatory fasts like Ramadan, where it should be known that everyone is fasting, then say, I am fasting. Because it's also a means of reminding the other person if they are Muslim to fast as well. So you set the tone, and it's not like anyone is trying to hide this good deed. If anything, everyone is supposed to be encouraging this virtue of fasting. But they say that if you are doing a voluntary fast, then say it to yourself, right? Like in Nisa'am, like remind yourself, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, okay? I'm not going to compromise the shield that I have on today by getting into the silly argument and potentially losing this fast. So in Nisa'am, I'm fasting. In any case, it's a means of affirming oneself, reminding yourself, and in some situations, even reminding the other person. But the function of the shield here is that fasting is a shield from ignorance that provokes your arrogance. Ignorance that provokes your arrogance. Jahad in the Arabic language does not simply refer to the loss of knowledge or information. It actually refers to anger. Okay, it refers to people that lose their temper frequently. So you protect yourself from an ignorance that provokes your own arrogance. Why? You're supposed to be curbing the nafs. You're supposed to be curbing the nafs. And just like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes allows you to accidentally take a bite of food or a sip of water, you know, in Ramadan, and it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? In the same way, it's a gift to your nafs sometimes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbles the nafs. Allah azza wa jal humbles the nafs through the encounter with someone else. So the first one, once again, as-sawmu junna ma lam yakhriqha. Fasting is a shield from your own sins. Don't crack your shield with your own sins. The second one, fasting is a shield from ignorance that provokes your arrogance. If someone is ignorant towards you, belligerent towards you, remind yourself, inni sa'am, inni sa'am. And if it is a day of Ramadan, inni sa'am, inni sa'am. Not as a way of shouting the person down or being arrogant with the person, but as a way of, look, let's put this aside Let's recalibrate and focus on the season that is at hand. The last one, 
the Prophet وسلم, says in another authentic hadith from Uthman ibn Abi al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that fasting is a shield from the fire, the same way that you have a shield in battle. And so the ulama here mentioned that in this way, fasting is a shield from the punishment in the afterlife. So subhanAllah, look at the ways in which the shield is so comprehensive, a shield from your sins, a shield from your arrogance, and from the ignorance of others provoking your arrogance, and a shield from the punishments in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the fire. Allahumma ameen. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said very famously, as Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates, O oh, young man, man istata'a minkum ulba'a, fal yatazawwaj. Whoever amongst you can get married, then let them get married. He said sallallahu alayhi wa that that lowers the gaze and it guards one, it guards a person's chastity, it guards their modesty. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if you cannot get married, then practice fasting frequently because it is wija. Wija means it diminishes the desires. It diminishes the desires. Now SubhanAllah, there's a very beautiful uh, statement from Imam Al-Ghazali Rahimahullah Ta'ala in this regard, that there are secular ways to diminish desires, right? You diet to diminish your, your appetite for food and drink, right? You could, in, you could endure other types of methods to diminish your desires, to control your appetite, right? But when you pair the diminishing of desires with quwwatul irada, with willpower, strengthening that desire for Allah's pleasure, which is what we do in the act of fasting, then it's far more rewardable because then it has benefits in the worldly sense as well as in the hereafter sense. So you're pairing off the diminishing of desires, you're weakening the desires and strengthening the desire for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And that's what makes this exercise of fasting so comprehensive and so beautiful. So what's the relationship between taqwa and sawm in this regard? Taqwa comes from the word wiqaya. Now wiqaya could be any protective barrier that you wear, any protective barrier. So wiqaya is a very general term in this regard. Not necessarily for al-qital, you could have uh, for, for fighting or for battle, you could have wiqaya because it's cold outside, okay? Wiqaya is a protective barrier. And the ulama say it could be something very thin or very thick, because not everyone has the same level of taqwa, right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us high levels of taqwa. Nakhayrazad, it's the best provision. May Allah grant us much taqwa. Allahumma ameen. So some people have a little bit of taqwa, a lot of taqwa, right? But it's a protective barrier. But ultimately, it is, to, it is to put a barrier between you and the prohibitions, the ma'asi, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So taqwa is the protective barrier that you put between yourself and haram, yourself and the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Junna is an added layer of protection. So imagine you've got the armor of taqwa and you put on top of it the armor of fasting. Now, what is beautiful about that is that the scholars say that Junna is a barrier between you and your shahawat. This shield of fasting is a barrier between you and your desires. And taqwa, which is what is, it is meant to generate, is a barrier between you and the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if to say that if a person puts a proper barrier between them and their shahawat and their desires, then they will naturally have a stronger barrier between themselves and the disobedience of Allah. Because ultimately we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once we allow our appetites, once we allow our desires to overcome the higher pursuit of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is more beautiful than all of this in the sense of the comprehensive nature of Islam. So taqwa is the, the body armor, fasting, right, is the Jannah, is the shield, what you put on top of the armor is what the Prophet ﷺ said about dhikrullah ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't describe sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dhikr as merely something that you wear or something that you hold. He described dhikr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like a fortress. It's a fortress, subhanAllah, a fortress. Because the shayateen, the devils cannot penetrate a place of dhikr. Whether that is the heart, whether that is the body involved in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether that is a home of dhikr, the shayateen are not able to penetrate the fortress of dhikr. And that's why the Prophet mentioned that if you were to remember Allah at all times, 
You'd be like what? You'd be like the angels who have no desire nor disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the state of dhikr removes the lure of desire and it removes the pull towards disobedience. And one of the things that we beautify our fast with, of course, and what will remain with us once we go back to eating and drinking at a regular pace is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep ourselves busy with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.